This blurry video shows onboard footage of the Falcon 9 in what you could call its first successful landing. This was before the rocket had ever landed on land or on the drone ship, but in order to build up to that, SpaceX was first trying to prove that the rocket could guide itself towards a target and come to a stop on an almost exact point. They had previously tried to do a soft water landing in 2013, but the Falcon 9 came in too fast and exploded on impact. This time however, everything went just right and SpaceX was able to learn a lot from this first landing. Despite this, however, when it came to doing the real thing on a drone ship, SpaceX had many tries before they finally nailed a landing. The best thing is to read the comments on that old video where people lived in a world where SpaceX landings weren't a normal thing. Over 128 landings later, and SpaceX has pretty much mastered this technique. But now they are looking to master another important technique. Starship Booster 7 has now begun its long campaign of testing, and despite a few rather dramatic setbacks, we should see it and its partner SN24 make the very first orbital attempt by a Starship rocket. Just to be clear, this will be the largest and most powerful rocket ever made when it launches, and with 33 Raptor engines on the booster, so many things can go wrong. Even if the rocket only makes it a few metres off the launch pad, it will still be incredibly exciting. But the part that I'm most looking forward to is obviously the booster landing. So in this video we're going to ask the question, will SpaceX try to catch it on their first attempt? The most sensible answer would be no, but if they don't catch it this time, then when will they try to catch it? A while ago SpaceX filed its plan for Starship's first orbital test flight. However, this was a very brief plan that didn't have a lot of information. Since then, many boosters and starships have come and gone, and the Raptor engine has become even more developed, so it's likely that plans have now changed. However, this was the original plan. Starship would launch from Boca Chica, and the booster would separate about 170 seconds into flight. From there, the booster would fire up its engines and start returning to the coast, aiming to perform a soft water landing just 20 miles offshore. The second stage would keep going until it reached orbit, and then it would re-enter and perform a similar soft splashdown, this time 60 miles off the coast of Kauai. Perhaps the most interesting thing from this document is that for the ship's landing it said splashdown, and for the booster it only said touchdown, and nowhere else in the document did it ever refer to the booster splashing down in any kind of controlled or gentle way. Either this is because they never actually planned on doing any kind of landing in the first place, or they intended to land it in a different or more familiar way, like landing on a drone ship or some kind of ocean platform. The only piece of information this document gave away is that it said the booster would land in the Gulf of Mexico. But we now know that at the start of this year, SpaceX started posting new jobs for marine recovery engineers to support the Starship program. While these jobs didn't mention SpaceX's oil rigs, which are currently being converted into floating launch and landing platforms, these job postings suggest that SpaceX could still be looking to land Super Heavy on some kind of barge or floating platform. An option that SpaceX could be keeping open is using one of their oil rigs once it has been stripped down to use as a flat landing pad out at sea. But I think this is very unlikely however, at least for the first couple of booster landings since we haven't really seen any evidence of the oil rigs being ready or any kind of legs being designed for the booster. But recently, SpaceX released an updated launch plan which revealed some interesting information. The plan shows a very similar flight path to the previous plan, but it then says the booster will perform a partial return to land in the Gulf of Mexico, or return to Starbase to be caught by the launch tower. So after all, it looks like SpaceX could attempt a catch on the very first attempt, which would be crazy and pretty scary to watch. But I'm actually not so surprised by this. After all, SpaceX has a habit of absolutely sending it on their first attempt. The Falcon Heavy test flight involved doing a lot of new things for the very first time. It was the first time SpaceX had ever fired up so many Merlin engines at the same time, it was the first time they had separated multiple boosters, and it was the first time that two boosters performed simultaneous landings. Another reason I thought that they might try to catch it for the first time 
is because they can drastically reduce the risk of something going wrong by being a bit more flexible. With the Falcon 9 landings, the rocket actually aims for a spot away from the drone ship or landing pad, and so the natural trajectory will actually take it into the ocean. This is so that if something has failed on the rocket, like an engine or the grid fins, the rocket will miss the drone ship and not damage any important equipment. If everything seems to be working correctly, the booster will start aiming for the drone ship and perform a manoeuvre to translate towards the landing pad. I think that this is exactly what SpaceX is aiming to do with Super Heavy. It could be that if the booster performs exactly how they want it on ascent and during its return, that they are confident enough to aim for the chopsticks. If the booster has some kind of issue, it will simply continue falling and end up in the water. If this happens, SpaceX could still attempt some kind of uh, catch simulation by performing the landing burn. Even if it does end up in the water, I really hope that it touches down gently so SpaceX can tow the booster back into port for them to inspect. Then we'd get to see awesome pictures like this from when a Falcon 9 ended up in the water. But why would SpaceX risk catching it on the first attempt anyway? Let's be honest, it does seem extremely risky to do this on the first attempt, especially with all the extra hardware that surrounds the launch pad, which could cause a massive setback if destroyed. But SpaceX perhaps has a lot of confidence from landing the Falcon 9 so many times. Both vehicles control themselves in very similar ways, with the grid fins and gas thrusters helping them to steer their way back to the landing pad. But it's no doubt that Super Heavy is a different beast altogether, that will almost certainly throw up some surprises. Just look at the recent Booster 7 test. It was the first time that SpaceX had tested all 33 engines at once and it caught them off guard. But what happens if the catch goes wrong? How bad could the damage be? Well, despite the size of Super Heavy, when it comes into land it's almost completely empty, with just a fraction of the propellants remaining to perform the landing burn. So even if an explosion did happen, I wouldn't expect it to be any more damaging than the previous Starship explosions. The biggest worry, in my opinion, is if the booster misses and completely obliterates the tower or tank farm. With the velocity and mass of Super Heavy as it comes in, it could do some serious irreparable damage. It would be such a shame to see the tower destroyed this way, but at least SpaceX now has a second Starship tower under construction in Florida. This tower is coming together extremely quickly and it should be almost finished by the end of the year. But let's think positively. Even if SpaceX doesn't go for the catch attempt, the launch will be spectacular. Seeing a fully stacked Starship on the pad, knowing it's absolutely full of propellant, will be exciting and terrifying at the same time. And on the slim chance that they actually do catch Super Heavy on the first attempt, it will be the craziest thing we've ever seen. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think SpaceX will attempt to catch Super Heavy on the first flight? Do you think Starship will even make it off the ground? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It's a great way to let YouTube know that you like my content and it helps grow the channel. But if you want to go a step further, consider becoming a patron where you can watch each video before it goes on YouTube without any ads. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.